All right, Shalom. Giving all glory, honor, and praises to you. How about Shimmy Awashire, by Shimmer Chakradash? Double honors to the apostles, the elders, great millstone, who rule and teach well. Peace, love, salutation to the 1144 first fruit. All right, this is your uh, brother Kashkwala coming with you, coming back at you with a swift, swift lesson in the spirit. Um, pretty much, probably going to name this one. Um, uh, everyone has their moments, or maybe don't linger in your moments. If you see what I'm saying, I'll, I'll figure out what to name it later. Uh, but <clears throat> uh, through the spirit, I can see, you know, hey, you know, brothers be catching hell across the globe. Um, and sometimes you, as you know, you, you can see it as a camp. Sometimes you have the seasons where you're either up or when you're down, you know. And, and as of lately, I know my lessons have been kind of triggered or centered around you know, climbing up out of that rut that you may be in or just trying to encourage or anything because I know um, I'm going through it as well as other brothers and I just want to make these videos to just paint the picture that we are not alone. And that goes for, you know, sisters who may tune in and listen as well. You know, any, any brother's families, anything of that nature. I just want to make these lessons as um, edifying and in a sense, send my comforts, you know, my comfort towards one another. But um, everyone has their moments. Everyone has their low points. Uh, everyone goes through them, but only the strong uh, will, you know, not let that moment linger or uh, elongate longer than it needs to be. Even though the Lord can keep you in a certain space as long as he wants to, but you, know, you got to learn how to be content. I, I, my last lesson was kind of about that. Uh, so here's Hebrews, the chapter 13. This lesson is going to be quick. Chapter 13 and 5. It says, let your conversation be without covetousness. All right. So not in in a, in a respect of wants. All right. A sense of, of wanting all the damn time. Uh, your conversation is your conduct. Of course, let's go ahead and get the word conversation real quick. Tropos in the Greek. And it means you're a manner, way, or fashion, all right? A manner of life, your character. So don't let your characteristics be always in a sense of wanting all the damn time. Let's just get the word covetousness in the Greek, too, just for edification purposes. Strong's G, 866. Afilar guras. All right, it says uh, greedy of filthy lucre. All right, always of wanting. And then, you know, um, in the today's time, though, the, the thing that really runs this place is money. Uh, that's why the scriptures say, for the love of money is the root of all evil. So if you always are coveting money, um, then, you know, you got to check yourself real talk. Don't let your mannerisms be always centered around money. I know we need it to, uh, you know, a sufficient amount to you know, suffice for our daily bread, but don't let that overly consume you, all right? So let's, let's keep reading. Hebrews 13 and 5, let your conversation be without covetousness. So we understand that. It says, and be, with, and be content with such things as ye have. A good precept, of course, is that Philippians 4. It says, for he hath said, I will never... I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Exactly. So let me just get a quick precept here in um, Sirach, the fourth chapter, really quickly. Okay. All right, the 24th chapter, Sirach. I'm in this chapter quite often. Um, I just want to get one part of it, though. Okay. Um, Let's see. Bear with me. Oh, yeah, yeah, nine. Uh, Sirach 24 and 9, he says, He created me from the beginning before the world, and I shall never fail. Exactly. That's the point I wanted to bring out. I kind of blanked out there, but 
It says, I will never, the scriptures say what? I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So when you're going through your things, be content with the things that you have. We read the scripture in the book of Ecclesiastes, Sirach, showing you the chief principal things of life. So you're going to have shelter, you're going to have clothes, you're going to have food. The Lord will always provide that. It may not be comfortable for the time being, but he will always sustain thee. And you be thankful and content for that. And it says, and I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Right. Because, I mean, the scriptures say so. And it also, in this particular chapter, he chose Israel and he will never fail. All right. So let's continue. It says, and we're going to get to the point of the matter. Verse 6, it says, so that we may boldly say that the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Exactly. So the reason I'm doing this lesson is for whatever predicament that you're in, you know, you may be having a low moment. Uh, don't uh, have your mind in such a, a negative space, you could say, to where you're lingering in that moment. Uh, I wish I had a moment in the Garden of Gethsemane, but he didn't let his mind linger there. And what, what happened? What, what do you think would happen to us if Yahushai let his mind linger there when he was doing his fast 40 days, 40 nights and was being tempted by Satan? What if he let his mind linger in that space? You see what I'm saying? Instead of fighting to overcome or even this, if the situation didn't change. OK, because you got to understand 40 40 days, 40 nights, that's like a month and a half, according to the wicked ass calendar that we're on. OK, because you got you what? You got 40 days, so about 30 days in a month, plus another 10. So that's like a month and a half, um, a little under a month and a half of just, you know, nothing to eat, nothing to drink, being tempted. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, you know physically in the flesh spiritually by satan what if what if he let his mind linger in a space of negativity we wouldn't have the chances that we have here today so it's the same thing with you when you're going through your your hardships initially when it happens it's extremely difficult because your flesh is uh, being acclimated to something that is new um because we through life you experience new challenges so your flesh is being introduced to something or being initiated in something that is new and it it, it it brings a high level of stressful uncomfortability to you. What if you don't let your mind linger in that negative space? Ha understand the moment is happening. Of course, in the beginning, it's like, fuck. But understand the moment is happening at a point. Catch yourself. And then... Practice being content. Practice your temperance. All the things that it speaks of in the in the book of Peter. Okay? Practice all those things. Add on to your spirit and overcome. Like the scriptures tell you, uh, tell in Revelation, the second chapter, uh, the ones who overcometh. Try to be the one who overcometh. All right? And I, that's an accurate statement for me to say, to say, try to be the one to overcome it. Because the scriptures say, put on as the elect. OK, because the elect are ultimately the ones who overcome and who overcame, according to the scriptures in Revelation, the second chapter. I think that's verse 17. Um, so don't linger. Don't linger in your moment. OK. Don't linger in that negative space. Don't linger there. Don't, you know, just be stuck on stupid like Jake like to say. Understand that the Lord is not going to forsake you. Even though it may feel it may feel that way, all right. Um, matter of fact, a good scripture to understand that you know sometimes it may feel like uh, uh, you're you're alone. It's because the Lord, in a sense, is slaying you. <laughs> okay, uh, let me get that in Job really quick. All right, it says uh, Job thirteen and fifteen. Though he slay me. Yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain mine own ways before him. Salaki, one moment.
All right, Salakia, Salakia, brothers, I'm back. So again, it says, though he slay me, okay, though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. All right, <clears throat> and that word slay, let's, matter of fact, let's get that word slay really quick in the Hebrew. Quetal in the Hebrew, and it means what? Uh, to slay, to kill, all right? But let's keep going. It says to cut off. You see that? To cut off, all right? In, in, in a sense, you know, of slaying. You know how Jake be. I mean, I don't, I don't mess with this dude. I'm going to cut him off. Doesn't mean he's going to actually, actually, like, you know, kill the guy. But or if, you, if, if a woman, you, you may be dealing with a woman, and she kept, and Satan gets on her. You gotta cut her ass off, meaning let her be. You know what I'm saying? Or get away from her. Or put it, put it, push her to the side. You see what I'm saying? Shit. If you have a rib, sometimes you you cut your rib off for a time being. It's like yeah, I ain't fucking with you right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you come back around when you get your act together. You know, that's how the Lord does us. All right. And sometimes that makes us feel like, in a sense, that we're alone. All right. So what you know what this is saying. You know, in a sense, this is though he slay me, though he cut he cut me off for a time. Yet will I trust in him. Hey, for Yahweh Shai. Uh did this not happen to him spiritually, mentally, and actually physically? Isaiah the fifty third chapter. You know, it pleased the Lord to uh to bruise him, okay? So when he actually passed away on the cross, okay, when he when he got crucified. That was in the sense, though the Lord slayed him, okay? But he still kept his trust in him. He says, but I will maintain mine own ways before him. That's the integrity part. And that's the part where you don't linger in your shitty moment and become bitter, all right, ultimately, all right? So I'm, I'm going to end it there, um, you know, Hebrews. Matter of fact, Salaki, one more precept, because I don't know how I didn't get this precept with Hebrew 13 and 6, because it pretty much says exactly the same thing. Uh, he's just, you know, just quoting exactly what it says in Psalm. Psalm 118 and 6, it says, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? Uh, Hebrews 13 and 6, so that we may boldly say, The Lord is my helper. The Lord is on my side. And I will not fear. What uh, what man shall do unto me? Exactly saying the same thing. So understand when you're going through your moment, don't linger in it. Because the Lord, like he said, he will never leave or forsake us. All right. And he's our helper. And he will never fail. So don't linger in your moment thinking that it's just, that's just how shit is. That's just how shit is for the temporary moment. And understand that the Lord can get you up out of it. So, Lord willing, this is edifying and encouraging. Um, I want to give all glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Achakadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders, the great millstone, the willing to teach well. Peace, love, salutation to the elect, 144 first fruit. Brother Kashukwa, until the next time, Shalom. And like always, repent for Yahweh Shai is coming back sooner than what me and you believed. Shalom.